Satanic Perils by Oswald Chambers But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. What are the Satanic Perils? In Matthew 16, 23, we come to the location where we live. The perils spring straight out of the way we are made. Have you ever noticed the remarkable identification Jesus Christ makes in that passage? What is it Peter had said? Pity thyself, Lord. Jesus replied, Get thee behind me, Satan. Then he tells Peter that he is saying the thing that belongs to the wrong disposition of man, which is identified with Satan. Beware of satanic perils where you take them to be natural tendencies. Remember, Satan is an awful being. He is able to deceive us on the right hand and on the left, and the first beginnings of his deceptions are along the line of self-pity. Self-pity, self-conceit, and self-sympathy will make us accept slanders against God. Satan's perils arise out of the strong disposition that Adam introduced us to, and that wrong disposition shows itself in self-pity and self-sympathy. Beware of slandering the old man, as is very often done. I mean, making the old man appear ugly. The old man does not appear ugly to anybody but the Holy Ghost. The old man, that is, this disposition that connects me with the mystical body of sin is the most highly desirable thing on earth to me till I am quickened by the Spirit of God and born from above. It makes me consider, quote, my rights, unquote. It makes me look after myself and consider what is good for me. Then another peril, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. That means that there are tremendous and appalling external manifestations of Satan. And the curious thing is that nowadays, people are paying much more attention and watching out more eagerly for these great manifestations of satanic power while they allow the other satanic peril to have its way. Spiritualism is child's play compared to this other thing. Once you get the disposition altered, you will never be deluded by any of the satanic powers that manifest themselves in spiritualisms in the external world. The peril is the inside peril, which men never think of as a peril. My right to myself, my self-pity, my self-conceit, my consideration for my progress, my ways of looking at things, that is the satanic peril in me that will keep me in perfect sympathy with Satan's ideas. Satanic anarchy is conscious and determined opposition to God. Wherever there is a law of God, Satan will break it. Wherever God's rule is, Satan will put himself alongside and oppose it. As we said in the last chapter, Satan's sin is at the summit of all sins. Man's sin is at the foundation of all sins. And between them there is all the difference in the world. Satan's sin is conscious, emphatic, and immortal rebellion against God. He has no fear, no veneration, and no respect for God's rule. Whenever God's law is stated, that is sufficient, Satan will break it, 
and his whole purpose through the disposition of sin in you and me is to get us to the same place. The anarchy in Satan is, then, a conscious, tremendous thing. Satan in the Bible is never represented as being guilty of sins, never represented as being guilty of doing wrong things. He is a wrong being. Men are responsible for doing wrong things, and they do wrong things because of the wrong disposition that is in them. And sometimes you will find that the moral cunning of your own nature makes you blame Satan, when you know perfectly well you ought to blame yourself. The true blame for sins lies in the wrong disposition in you and me. And I think it right to say that Satan, in all probability, is as much upset as the Holy Ghost when men go into external sins, but from a different reason. When men go into external sins and upset their lives, Satan knows perfectly well that they will want another ruler, a savior, a deliverer, but as long as he can keep us in peace and unity and harmony apart from God, he will do it. Remember, then, that Satan's sin is dethroning God.